Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm delighted that you've been able to find the time to join us this evening. Uh, my name is Phil Dyer and I'm the Public Image uh, Coordinator for Rotary Great Britain and Ireland. And like I say, this is the first webinar uh, of our introduction to Crowdfunder, who are our partner in the UK and Ireland for crowdfunding. Um, like I say, delighted that you've joined us tonight. Just like to remind you that this is a webinar and that we will be operating uh, question and answers through the question and answer function. There will be no chat functionality. And if you could raise your questions in there, we'll bring them to our specialist later on. Um, I know Garth Arnold, who some of you will know, wanted to join us tonight, but unfortunately has uh, another engagement. Garth is the chair of the Rotary Great Britain and Ireland board and um, he's, he's unable to make us, but he was the previous crowdfunding champion for Rotary Great Britain and Ireland. So a little message from Garth. Apologies for not being able to join you for your session this evening. Uh, Steve Gale, who I'll introduce you to in a moment, will give you a um, an overview of our crowdfunding journey, which began about five years ago. And it really took off over COVID using Global Givings UK platform. And whilst it's a year old, here are some of the figures. Raised by clubs, $282,000. Uh, driven funds by Global Giving, $103,000. Donors, $3,000. And 24 live projects, 24 and live partners, 29. And those figures are a little over a year out of date. We're hoping that our relationship with Crowdfunder uh, will be able to uh, match and more those figures. Uh, so we're delighted that we're starting our new relationship with uh, the team at Crowdfunder. And I'm delighted that Steve and his team are taking forward this uh, partnership with Rotary Great Britain and Ireland. So over to you, Steve. Lovely. Thank you, Phil. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for joining us tonight. When we talk about crowdfunding, we hear various comments about newfangled ways to raise money. So to, let's start with a little bit of history. Back in 1885, the Statue of Liberty lay in pieces in New York. They couldn't afford the plinth for it to stand on. The cost in those days was a quarter of a million dollars. They'd got 150,000, but they were 100 short. The publisher of the New York World newspaper, Joseph Pulitzer, decided to mount a campaign in his newspaper and he raised $105,000, and that was 137 years ago. The Statue of Liberty was erected, and that's it's now history. Now let's roll the clock forward and go to February 2021. And the riding for the disabled Park Lane Stables in Southwest London were given notice that they'd got a week to raise a million pounds to buy their stables because the landlord wanted to sell. They'd got 500,000, but they still needed 500,000. On the 18th of February, that story broke on BBC News, six o'clock in the morning. By midday, they'd got, or they'd raised the 500,000 pounds. That is the power of crowdfunding. I've used crowdfunding for over four years and I joined Garth on the national team. The global giving contract was due to end, so we researched the available options. As a seasoned fundraiser, I was truly excited by the various opportunities that Crowdfunder offers and believe they are the perfect partner for clubs wishing to make a difference. They're a UK based platform. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Caroline Forbes from Crowdfunder to tell you more. Thank you. 
Thank you for the introduction, Steve. Um, really, it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Um, and yeah, thank you for your time. Um, so I'm going, I'm here to talk about crowdfunding via the Crowdfunder platform. Uh, Crowdfunder has been around for um, just over 10 years. And in that time, we've raised or helped charities, community groups, personal projects, local businesses uh, to raise over 300 million pounds um so you know it's a it, it's a strong platform and like steve says it's got it's got a great history so i'm going to talk to you today a little bit about the crowdfunder platform and some of the benefits that you as uh, rotary groups can benefit from for um for your either fundraising for your own group or fundraising for the local community um so if you'd like to move on phil thank you um, so crowdfunding is a form of digital fundraising. It's a way to raise money for good causes. Um, but we like to think we're a very community and local community focused platform. So we try and connect people in the community with projects that matter to them. Steve's already alluded to the Riding for the Disabled organisation who went from you know nothing to hundreds of thousands of pounds through a successful crowdfunder and that's because they not only engaged nationally they also engaged regionally through the local media but also very locally uh, got in touch and, and captured the hearts of their community and that's what we feel is the pow power of of crowdfunding it is all about recognizing and finding your crowd and uh, putting forward a proposition that they can't ignore. Uh, next slide. So one of the differences between, I guess, crowdfunder as a platform and other organisations, so we've already talked about global giving, there's obviously just giving, um, lots of different fundraising platforms. The, the difference uh, with crowdfunder.co.uk is that it, we focus on rewards based crowdfunding. So your usual crowdfund or fund, digital fundraiser, you're probably going out asking people to make a donation and in return they get that great feeling of having donated to a good cause. What we do at Crowdfunder is something slightly on top of that. So what we enable uh, projects or communities to do is offer their supporters something in return for that financial donation. Um, what that means in reality is that people get, well, A, get something in return. So they get the great feeling of supporting a cause, but they also get some sort of prize or reward in return for their donation, which will give them that little bit more connection to the support that to the cause that they're supporting but it also means and in our um in our experience that they are more likely to donate a higher amount so the average donation when you attach some kind of reward to your crowdfunder goes up on average across crowdfunder it's about 18 pounds per donation for a, a standard fundraiser when you attach a reward or a prize to your crowdfunder um, that average donation goes up to about 50 pounds plus we have lots of other benefits of the crowdfunder platform so you'll see how all of those benefits combined can make your project or your fundraiser more successful than you, you might have found in in past so that's what I'm hoping to inspire you to do today it is, is utilise the benefits of, of the crowdfunder platform uh, to enable a successful fundraise. Next slide. So as I've, I've talked about, it, crowd is, is the optimal word here, crowdfunding. We want you to help we want to help you engage with your community who you are already i know through the fantastic work you do you're already very engaged with the local community it may be that's the community in which you live in or it might be a community abroad that you visited um, but we're trying to help you facilitate that engagement with with a community so what we do is help you bring your crowd to crowdfunder um, and help your supporters your existing supporters to help you fundraise but what we also do is bring our crowd too so we have over 200,000 very engaged uh, crowdfunder supporters who have already funded a project 
um, and they are looking for more causes to donate to. Um, on average, uh, a member of our crowd is donating to between four and five projects at any one time. So they're not just coming on because they know about a project to donate and then leave. They are actively looking for causes to support. In addition to that, we also have a number of corporate partners who are also bringing uh, their crowd, generally their employees and their uh, customers to Crowdfunder. And in return, they will match fund community projects. Um, so I'll, t I'll talk a bit more about that in, in, in detail as we go along. Um, so the power of your crowd, our crowd, your fantastic project, our partners will mean a hopefully a successful fundraise for you. Next slide. Um, so we talk about the three steps to success at Crowdfunder. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk to you, to you today is about the sort of planning and creating your project. We call it project, it could, but it could be, you, you might call it a campaign, an appeal, a fundraiser, um, that, but we call it a project. So when I talk about projects, I mean your, crowd, your Crowdfunder campaign. So I'm going to talk a lot about planning and, and creating, uh, less so much about running your project. But I also wanted to mention that um, as well as the tools that we're going to be talking about tonight, um, Crowdfunder also um, provides a lot of really great engaging uh, support material. So when you get these slides after the webinar, um, you'll be able to click through to that Knowledge Hub link. That gives you lots and lots of additional support in terms of videos, templates, uh, articles, features that you can utilise for free to help you get your project off to a great start. So three steps to success. Planning, we're going to talk about creating and then running your project. Next slide. Um, if you've done crowdfunding or digital fundraising or any kind of fundraiser before, this will probably not be a surprise to you. Um, but for those of you who may who maybe haven't done it before, and obviously I know there are different levels of experience in the room, um, this is where we sort of start with the planning. So you'll no doubt have an idea in your head about what you want to crowdfund for. So it might be for your own Rotary group, it might be for a local community project, it might be for um, some, you know. So somebody who's experiencing hardship. Um, so whatever your your um, you know project theme is going to be, um, the one thing you need to be able to do is find that network, find that crowd to be able to get your project in front of them. So we so one of the things so before you've even started setting up your project and crowdfunder, we suggest you go away and map out your crowd network. So obviously you'll be starting with people who you know already, your existing supporters, your family and friends, uh, the team around you. Um, but then also you might want to think about a bit wider about local businesses, local people, the community that you're in, the local press, social media and other partners. And what you want to do is then think about not just asking them for donations, but has, asking how else they can support you. And again, that's a three step process, which I'm going to cover on the next slide. So that end goal there, make a pledge. That's asking people for money, asking them to, to support your project. But what you also need to think about is how everybody in your network, everybody in your crowd can play a role um, and you have to, you know, and it's up to you to find out what that contribution might be. Obviously, getting them to donate money is the end goal. But what else can they do for you? Can they share your project? So are they a well-connected uh, organisation or a well-connected influential person who can share the project with their own, um, you know, their own organisation that they work for? Do they have an extended network on social media? Um, do they have good connections with the press? How else can they help you reach a much bigger audience? So that's something to worth thinking about. As I mentioned at the start of the session, we specialise in rewards-based crowdfunding. So can they help you by providing you with a reward? Something that, you know, we don't want you to have to pay for rewards because obviously you want to be able to um, collect as much money as possible and use it to support the cause that you care about. So can 
a local business, local influential person, can they offer you a reward? That could We've got all sorts of examples. And if you go onto Crowdfunder, you'll see lots of different projects offering all sorts of different rewards. It could be in monetary in value. It could be a money can't buy type event, tickets to something, um, you know, use your imagination. Um, and the best crowdfunders we've found are those that offer a variety of rewards, lots of different price points, um, whether it's, you know, for £10, you'll get a pen and a tote bag. For £500, you get access to an exclusive event. Whatever, you know, use your imagination, as I said, use your network, um, brainstorm ideas with your with your crowd, with your team, and that will help you, you know, make your project as successful as possible. Uh, so, yeah, next slide, please. And one thing I wanted to, to say about Crowdfunder is there are two slightly different routes, depending on whether your Rotary is a registered charity or not, or whether you're a community group set up as a, as a non-profit. Um, and because got, we've got slightly different features depending on whether you are registered or not. So registered charities, obviously, that probably means you're registered with the Charity Commission. Um, you have to report, you know, report um, your accounts every year. Um, a non-profit, you might be, you might be a community interest company um, or some other, you know, social enterprise. Um, so basically, you can access all of the benefits of Crowdfunder um, for free. We do not charge fees on Crowdfunder um, as a registered charity. Um, the only fees you will ch get charged are transaction fees that are passed on to us by our card providers that, that we work with. There is a little bit more information about fees towards the end. So if you're a registered charity, you can access everything on the Crowdfunder platform. Um, that includes um, our new currency, uh, Nectar Donate, which enables supporters to donate Nectar points as well as cash to your project. If you are not a registered charity and you're a, a, just a, a community interest group or another social enterprise, you can access everything, unfortunately, except Nectar Donate. Um, so that is the functionality that is at the moment only reserved for registered charities. Um, but it's something we're working on because we don't like to have unfairness on Crowdfunder. We're very much about parity for all. So I'm going to talk a bit more in detail about all of that different functionality and how you can access it. So next slide. I've talked a lot about rewards already. And as I said, if you offer rewards on your on your project for your for your cause, um, you'll get a much higher average donation than if you just ask for money. So you're incentivizing your supporter base. Um, I've already talked about offering a range of price points. So you're not putting off anybody who maybe basically maybe doesn't have a lot to a lot to give, but wants to give something. So you can start with, you know, a five or ten pound, ten pound reward. If you don't have a lot of rewards, that's also fine. We, we, you know, we're not saying you have to have rewards, but we're just saying that that can be a good way to increase your average donation. Um, so you could have a couple of high value rewards, um, which will you know, be of, of interest to maybe your higher value supporters. And then you can just uh, you know, make an ask for, for everybody else. Um, but again, it's about using the power of your network to get people to donate the rewards to you. We don't want you to be going out and spending your budget finding them. So use that power uh, um, of your of your local community to provide those rewards for you. And as I said, you can use your imagination. It doesn't have to be a thing. It can be an experience. It can be an event. So, for example, we did a lot of work during the pandemic with theatres. Um, as you can imagine, all the theatres were shut, so they were losing money um, and they have staff to support uh, a community. You know, it's part of the community. So when uh, the pandemic, you know, started to, to you know, I was say it hasn't gone away, but once, you know, theatres were reopening, they were able to use crowdfunding to not not only raise money but also to offer their supporters something in return so they can offer tickets to events but they were also offer, um, offered their supporters the use of the space so for a bit more money you could have a um, they offer they a lot of them were offering exclusive evenings of entertainment backstage tours meet meet the pantomime cast etc so again it's about using your sort of imagination and creativity to work out rewards that you can offer uh, that's not going to potentially cost you anything 
On that slide, um, which you'll be able to access afterwards, um, we've got 55 different reward ideas um, on a blog on the website. Um, but I've also done a list of other crowdfunders um, that you can gain inspiration from. Um, you know, every, every, everything from local restaurants providing vouchers to spa days to hampers to people offering their skills. So it might be that you know um, somebody who's really good at social media. Can can they say, I will offer you six sessions on how to use social media better. And um, we've had people offering floristry. We've had people offering physiotherapy, people offering personal training sessions. So, you know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't need to be something that costs money. It could be somebody giving up their time to help you raise more money for the projects that you want to support. So next slide. The other advantage of Crowdfunder is that individual, you can also set up individual fundraisers. So if you're fundraising for, say, your local hospice, you can set up a project page. Um, I've got Macmillan here as an example of a, of a big charity who's Crowdfunder. So what you can do is set up a project to support your local hospice, but then underneath your, your crowdfunder, you can allow individual fundraisers also to, to fundraise for that special cause as well. Um, because you're doing it all through crowdfunder, it means all of your fundraisers are linked, which means that you can a, keep tabs on what people are doing. You can generate competition between your fundraisers. Uh, you can create fundraising league tables. So it's kind of a way of getting people much more engaged than if, if they were sort of sort of feeling like they were on their own standalone. I've got my own fundraising page over here. You sort of make again, making them part of a crowd. Um, so all, your, all of your potential fundraisers can also fundraise off the back of your project. The other advantage of this is that if you're offering rewards, so say you've got some theatre tickets or um, you know personal training sessions, whatever it might be, your fundraisers can also offer those rewards on their fundraising pages. So again, it's another advantage for um, fundraisers, especially those of you who fundraised long and hard for many years. There is a there is, and I know a certain amount of fatigue. And fundraising again, you know, mum, dad, auntie, cousins, please will you support me? It's another way to get your fundraising, your fundraisers to uh, get support for their for their fundraisers. Um, and it means that they they have something to offer as well. So again, it's not just can you, you know, give me ten pounds so I can go and climb this mountain. It's give me ten pounds, I'm gonna climb this mountain. In return, you'll get this and I can raise more money. So again, it's helping your fundraisers raise a much more um a much bigger average donation than if they were asking or, or, um, for money alone uh so next slide prize draws are another way of again incentivizing your supporters they're really popular on, on uh, crowdfunder, especially again during the pandemic where people weren't able to go out. So uh, we've had companies, charities, uh, local organisations offer experiences um, for when you know people were allowed to go out again. So, for example, the one that's on the screen, Edinburgh Zoo. They offered a once in a lifetime night at the zoo where you could feed the animals, you could stay in a hotel, um, all expenses paid, but they ran that as a prize draw. So the difference with the prize draw is that everybody has the same chance of winning the prize. So they, they are offered just the one big prize. You know, everybody paid, I think it was five pounds a ticket. Um, they raised tens of thousands of pounds um, and then one, one lucky winner drawn out of the hat was able to win that prize. Again, money can't buy prizes such as the one that Edinburgh Zoo um, offered, uh, do the best. So it's something that you can't, you can't necessarily buy um, yourself. Again, we've got links to support. So Prize, you know, examples of prize draws that have worked really well, sort of prizes. And again, it's about using your imagination, using that network of local businesses and local people that you know who could potentially provide you with a prize. Um, and there's some terms and conditions you need to be aware of. But again, it's a relatively, again, simple and straightforward way to get engagement and to increase your donations. Next slide. Um, I've talked about right at the beginning, I talked about uh, match funding. So we call it extra funding um, on Crowdfunder. This is where we have 
um, engaged with a range of corporate partners who want to match fund local and national community projects. So um, there are some that are, are re very regional specific. Crowdfunders headquarters are in Cornwall. So if you're lucky enough to work for Rotary uh, in Cornwall or Devon, there's quite a few funding pots available for local organisations in, in that area. But we have match funding pots all over the country. We also have national funding as well from some of our corporate partners. Um, this means that they will, for every ten pound, for every pound that a supporter gives you, they will match it up to a certain amount. Uh, some of it's very generous, so it's definitely work, worth when you're thinking about your project page, have a look at the extra funding partners and work out how you can tailor your project to make sure that you're eligible for this match funding because it's free money, it's sitting there, we want people to access it. Every fund is different, so they'll have different entry criteria, uh, but if you're a not-for-profit, which I know you all are, there will be several funds available to you depending on what you're fundraising for. Um, you can also benefit from more than one funding pot. So if you've been lucky enough, say, to get funding from Creative Cornwall, you may also be eligible for one of our national funding pots as well. So you don't need you don't need to worry about selecting the right one. Try and go for them all because there is money available to you that's matched from our cor generous corporate partners and we want to give it away. Um, there's plenty more information on the crowdfunder site about what those funds are, how they work, how they operate, timescales, etc. Um, so obviously use, you know, go onto the website and have a look in your own time. But I am going to talk about a couple of uh, the more exciting ones that we've got available. So next slide. So our two biggest funding partners um, are Aviva and m &S. Uh, We've also run, we've, we've got over 70 partners on the site um, and um, we've, we've had a couple of, you know, quite big um, other funding partners who've recently closed, but we're hoping that they will be opening again next year. So if this doesn't work for you now, have a look to see, uh, you know, other funding partners who may be coming back online in, in, the, in the new year, because we're always adding new funding. So Aviva are our biggest partner. Um, they have a huge community fund. Um, and at the moment, because of the cost of living crisis, they're offering up to £50,000 per project um, for, for community projects that are helping people a, either deal with the cost of living or deal with the impact of climate change. So that could mean something around, so for maybe a rotary group, you're helping, you, you know, you might be fundraising for your own um, premises. So it could be something like we need to, we want to invest in solar panels, we want to invest in an electric vehicle, we want to invest in a new heating system, or it could be that you're supporting a hospice to do the same or a local community project to do the same. So think widely and broadly about how you could tailor your project to meet the criteria for that fund. So climate change, cost of living, the cost of living boost, again, um, that's about helping people be sort of financially resilient in, in the face of, you know, huge inflation and, you know, soaring energy costs. So we're helping, so Aviva want to help people, help other people to be more financially resilient. The m and Energy Fund is similar in terms of it's looking for projects who want to be more environmentally conscious. So again, it could be, are you investing in some sort of green energy? Um, you know, investing in, uh, could be, yes, I said like solar panels, could be insulation for a building. You know, again, think laterally about what it is that you could be either crowdfunding for your own group or crowdfunding for somebody else and make sure you can kind of fit that into your message so that you stand a chance of getting that match funding. As I've said, use your imagination to create a project that's eligible for the funds. So if you want to be clever, you could start with the fund first and then think about your project. If you've already got an idea about your project, think laterally about how you might be able to you know, fit this message into those funding options um, because, you know, it's there ready and waiting for you. Uh, next slide. The other advantage of Crowdfunder, 
um, is that we offer the ability for supporters to give you regular donations, whether or not you're a charity. So any any project, doesn't matter what you're fundraising for, how, um, how you have the option when a, when a supporter goes on to make a donation, they are given the option to make a regular donation. So again, this is a good way of getting supporters to be able to donate to either you or your local community cause on a regular monthly basis. Um, it's all gift aidable. So if you've got taxpayers who um, most of us are crowdfunding for you, they can apply gift aid. They can um, and amend um, and increase their amount through their crowdfunder account. It's not available on prize draws. This is available on rewards. So again, haven't got time to go into a lot of detail around it tonight, but there's lots of information on the website about how regular donations work. So again, it's it's worth, I mean, it's, it happens automatically, but it's also, again, something you can highlight uh, to your supporters. Don't forget, if you want to keep an on, you know, ongo supporters on an ongoing basis, make sure you sign up for regular donations. And uh, next slide. Now, this is really exciting for those of you who don't just want to do digital fundraising or online fundraising, but you're out there in the community, as I know you are. So if you're running face to face events, if you're going to events, if you print anything, you can also download a QR code from your project, which will enable anybody with a mobile phone to donate directly to your page through their phone. So, you know, not everybody's carrying cash around anymore because, you know, we all went cardless during the pandemic. Um, buying or finding card readers can be expensive or you know fiddly so if you want to go out and fundraise you know at an event if you've got a brochure that you've printed or a program for something if you're issuing tickets um, you can download this QR code which means people can donate through their phone straight away it's a couple of clicks of a button so it's a really easy way to tie in your face-to-face -face, your offline fundraising with what you're doing online. You can also use, also use QR codes online as well. So if you're sending out an email, you could put a QR code in there as well. Um, so you can add it to everything and anything that you're fundraising, that you're pr producing and, and make sure that everybody is driven to your to a fundraising page. Um, there's a little bit more information again. Um, I won't go to huge detail, but um, you can only get the QR code from a live project. So if you're thinking about I want to get my QR code, but I don't want to go live yet. You can set your project page live, get the QR code and then switch it off again, just so you've got, you know, you've, you're in control of how um, how and when you you launch your crowdfunder. So um, QR codes, great way of getting extra donations um, when you're out and about. And it means it's really low hassle and low cost for you and for uh, your supporters. Next slide. I mentioned this before, if you're a registered charity, um, you can also have the option to sign up to, don to Nectar Donate. This is Crowdfunder's other big partnership with Nectar. So we have um, enabled uh, all Nectar card holders in the UK the ability to donate the Nectar points to charity. Um, there are 18 million Nectar card customers in the UK. Five million of them, well, nearly five million of them want to give their their nectar points to good causes. And we know that 250 million pounds worth of nectar points are spent by customers every year. So there is a huge pot of, of nectar points ready and waiting for you as a charity to get hold of. There's no, you don't need to do anything different when you sign up to crowdfunder and you start creating your project page it'll ask you to opt in to neck to donate and then when your page goes live a supporter will see you know donate 20 pounds and then when they go into the donation process it'll ask them whether they want to donate via card via all the traditional payment methods or if they want to donate nectar points they will link their nectar card to their to the donation and that will pull through live data from Nectar. So it'll tell them exactly how much, how many points they've got and how much that um, is worth in cash um, so that they can choose to donate five pounds, ten pounds, four pound twenty five, whatever it is that they've got on their put on their card. And that will come to you as a cash donation on your project page. So it, again, 
if you're as, as seasoned fundraisers, you know it's quite hard, and we've spoken about this, uh, to keep going out and asking people for cash, especially at the moment. So this is another way of getting people engaged, and uh, uh, enabling your supporters to give you money without a any hassle but b give, it gives you another opportunity to go and ask ask for money um and every, loads of people have got next points that they don't even know they've got really so it's a good way of going out and saying hey if you haven't got any spare cash why not give us your nectar points um so again it's a new way to raise funds um there's a little video on on this slide i'm not going to play that tonight but there is uh, further information obviously on the crowdfunder site and via this video so if you'd like to show us the next slide. Yeah, if you can click on from that, thank you. Um, again, one thing you want as a fundraiser is to be able to know exactly how successful your project has been. So we, we make sure that we offer you some really good, clear reporting and data so that you can see exactly how much you've raised, um, how much is gift aided, whether they are direct pledges to you or whether they're fundraising pledges. Um, you can see timelines, timescales, how many, how much, by when. So making sure we have give you all of that data that you need to show the success of your your, your crowdfunder. Um, so you'll when you set up an account, you'll have a, a private dashboard, uh, which is only accessible for you, which is where you can access all of the information. You can also download your supporter information. So you can download it into an Excel spreadsheet. So if you have an email database, for example, you can download that um, crowd, you know, crowdfunder information in and use it to um, you know, in, in increase your email opt-ins as well. Um, every donation, every supporter is asked to opt in to communications. So we're totally G GDPR compliant. So that means that if they've provided you with an email address, uh, you'll get a, a notification that says they've opted in, which means you can contact them in the future as well. So a great, again, a great way to, to build your, your supporter base up. Next slide. So I'm nearly done, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, we have created a dedicated Rotary sign-up page. Um, it's not live yet, it'll be live tomorrow, and that will give you the all the tools you need to sign your Rotary group up to Crowdfunder. Um, it'll give you the two options of whether you're a registered charity or a not-for-profit, um, so you'll just make sure you click the right button, um, and it'll take you through a process. You'll have to provide you know all your basic information then they'll in then it'll enable you to build a page so you can talk about the project that you want to fundraise for whether it, as i said whether it's a local community project it's a local charity whether you're fundraising for yourself or for somebody else and once your project goes live you will have your own dedicated web link dedicated url that you can then share so you, that's where you go out and you share it with everybody um what we'll also then do is we're building a hub for Rotary clubs and groups, which will show all of the Rotary clubs. So you can see what your next door neighbours are doing, what they're doing on the other side of the country, um, use it as a little bit of um, you know, best practice, get ideas from each other, um, and we'll totalise that. So um, Rotary as a national organisation will be able to show just how much every individual Rotary group has fundraised, but also the total amount. So as um, Phil, Phil said and, and Steve said at the beginning, you know, Rotary in total has raised loads of money through global giving. Why, uh, you know, when we do this crowdfunder, you'll be able to also report back to whoever you need to do about how much you've raised and how much Rotary, uh, generous Rotary clubs have, have generated um, in total. And when we've, sort of we've started doing that process we're also going to from a crowdfunder point of view crowdfunders marketing team will be promoting this as well so obviously it's down to you to make your project as successful as possible using all the tools i've talked about but crowdfunder are also behind you on this we want this to be a success too so we'll be promoting it across our social channels our email database we'll be talking to our press contacts as well so we'll be able to share all of that uh, great work that's going on with our network too so the power of our crowd um, and we'll share that with you we've also created um, a few social assets as well so we'll create some dual branded um, when I've spoken to, to Phil 
dual branded assets so you can use sort of the crowdfunder rotary brand as well uh, to promote on social and email as well so we'll try to give you as many tools as possible to make your crowdfunding a huge success um, so next slide I will give you a little example of something we came up with this is just an example of how you might use crowdfunder in reality so this was an idea that um we we came about with we had a meeting with steve a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about the cost of living crisis and we were talking about how we could potentially get all of that aviva match funding um you know in into rotary groups so we came up with this idea this is only an idea um so you can use this so we can disregard it um, was to do this idea of warm Wednesdays. So local rotary groups crowdfund to have a venue open in your local community every Wednesday that's free, that's warm, that's safe, maybe get a hot meal. So helping people in the community that might be suffering over Christmas, well, over, over the sort of winter period, uh, give them a place to go where they can get a hot meal, get a hot drink, uh, maybe even talk about you know financial matters if they're worried about finances so we sort of came up with this campaign about war, rotary warm wednesdays as an idea to so to sort of stimulate a bit of 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 creativity um so it's an idea um we've run it we ran it past aviva that's the sort of thing that they would want to support so if you want an easy way to use crowdfunder try something like this otherwise i'm sure you have local community projects that you want to support yourselves um but this is an idea um should you want to to take it up and if it's something that i know a lot of people are thinking about and and i'm sure people are coming to you saying how can how can rotary support us through this cost of living crisis uh, this is one of the ways uh, you could potentially do it next slide Um, as I said, there's loads and loads of support available uh, through Crowdfunder. Um, we've got a knowledge hub, learn centre, help guides, Crowdfunder also do webinars and drop in sessions um, on a regular basis. So as and when you're um, setting up your project, if you sign up for, if you opt into Crowdfunder emails, uh, they will email you with information about lunch and learns, webinars that are coming up, lots of stuff so as well as uh, the support that I'm able to give you the support that Steve will give you you can also access uh, the stuff that's on crowdfunder obviously it's generic so it's not specifically dedicated to rotary but there's a wealth of knowledge available um, all sorts of stuff to, to help you be as successful as possible in your crowdfunding so do take advantage of it because it's there and it's free um, so next slide is basically me saying thank you very much. Please keep in touch. There's two email addresses there. So there's myself, Caroline Forbes. There's also my colleague, Thea Partridge. Uh, we're both experienced crowdfunders and we're available to help you and support you and guide you through your crowdfunding journey. Um, also, as I said, Steve is, Steve is our, your crowdfunding champion. So please utilize Steve as well um and you know we as i said we're here to help you be as successful as possible we want you to raise money we want to help you access that much funding be as creative as possible so use all of the tools at your disposal um, there are a few further slides which i'm not going to go through tonight because they're quite detailed on how you set up a, a crowdfunding page there is also some information about how much the fees are so when you get these this slide pack um, after the webinar has closed you can make sure you you know you go through the, the full slide deck because there's a lot more information on there for you um, as i said crowdfunder is free crowdfunder is free for not-for-profits and uh, charities we do not charge monthly fees we don't charge subscriptions the only fees we charge our transaction fees that are passed on to um, from our card provider payment providers so um, just wanted to make it clear for you that all of this stuff is provided to you for free because we want you to be successful so thank you very much for your time today um, and uh, good luck right <clears throat> please could I say thank you to Caroline for that superb presentation. I hope 
we've encouraged you to research the pots of money available because I believe it will encourage clubs to develop projects. Also, the nectar points. Um, I can tell you in 1240, within a couple of weeks, any nectar points donated will go to Foundation, our own charity. And if the need is there, we will hold drop-in sessions where you can come and ask your questions. But please reach out any questions. At any rate, sorry, back to Phil. Uh, well done, both of you. Uh, that was uh, incredible. Lots and lots of information there for everyone to take on board. Uh, quite a lot of questions here. Uh, so uh, we're going to rattle through them. Uh, there's a little bit of repetition from the question uh, providers, uh, but in no particular order, we'll start off uh, with Keith Brownlee. And Keith asks, whilst I am supportive, are there any traps or difficulties yeah. that we should look out for and try and avoid? Stray in there, Keith, with a very pointed question to Caroline. That's a great question. Well, I like to think there aren't any traps because that's not what we're about. However, um, what I will say is use the help guides available on Crowdfunder when you start your project page. Um, so a couple of tips. Uh, one thing, if you want, if you're a registered charity and you want to utilise the Nectar Donate um, service, um, there is additional information that will be asked of you when you set your account up. So go through the help guides because there's loads of information in there about what information you need to provide. That is because Nectar Donate is run through a separate third party payment provider to our usual card transactions. So we use a company, um, um, a, a different company, a different payment provider. So if you want to utilize the Nectar points um, or be, be able to receive Nectar points, there is a slightly different information you need to provide. So just bear that in mind. It's not a trap. It's just slightly different information it can get a little bit messy. So as with any organization dealing with funds, we need to make sure we're covered for anti-money anti-money laundering le legislation, uh, know your customer, know your donor legislation. So we will ask you for ID when you set up your project page. Um, if you've got a, a bank account that's registered in your Rotary Group name, so like a business or charity bank account, not a problem. That will be immediately accepted. If you're trying to set up a Rotary Group page that's got a personal bank account attached to it, we will ask you for more information. Um, so don't be surprised if you suddenly start getting asked for further ID, names of trustees or names of directors. So those are the sort of little pitfalls um, and traps that you might find a little bit challenging. I just wanted to also offer just off the back of that um, Brilliant question. Thank you, Keith. Um, a quest, uh, little tip for you about launching your crowdfunder. Um, it is not a case of if you build it, they will come. People, If people don't know about your fundraising page, about your crowdfunder page, they're not going to come and donate. So don't set up your project page and wait for people to come to you. What I would advise is if you have a go live date, say, let's say 14th of November, I want to go live, make sure you have five to 10 donors already teed up to make donations the day or the minute your page goes live. That will help you in a number of ways. A, it'll make sure that your project page surfaces up to the top of Crowdfunder and becomes a sort of trending project because Crowdfunder likes to pick up popular projects. So if you've got five or 10 donors who immediately donate, the minute your page goes live, that will surface up to the top of Crowdfunder. It may get you featured on the home page. Um, it also makes, makes your page look really popular and people like to donate to projects that are doing well. So that's a, just a little nugget of advice for you. Um, but hopefully that's more than answered the question. If not, uh, please put another question in the chat. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, this might be a little bit of a joint effort here from Steve and yourself, Caroline. Uh, Jimmy Johnston asks, um, are we now working directly with Crowdfunder, taking out the middle group from earlier projects? I'm not quite sure what Jimmy's after there, but I'm just wondering, are we now not doing anything with global giving and we're now wholly with Crowdfunder? 
Steve might be able to address that one. Yes, certainly. Um, Crowdfunder is the platform we are featuring. There are still global giving projects live, but be aware of the charges because Rotary doesn't have a current agreement with them. Um, you, when you look at the charge page with Crowdfunder, you will be amazed. It is a fraction of what we paid to global giving, even at the subsidised rates. But there is no reason why you shouldn't use Giving Tuesday and any other promotions they do when you get a good return. But just be aware um, of what the charges will be. But Crowdfunder is our preferred partner. Thank you, Steve. That's great. I would also like to add to that that we are, whilst we'd love to be your exclusive platform, I am very aware that many charities use lots of different donation platforms. So try us and see if it works for you. Um, use it in combination with other um, platforms that you might be using. Um, but as Steve said, hopefully the information I've given you tonight has uh, intrigued you enough that you want to give us a go. Um, but um, and but use what's best for you. That, that will be my option. I'm you know, being honest. I'd love you to all use Crowdfunder and nothing else. But I'm also very uh, realistic and know that um, other platforms offer different um, options for you. So just try it, try it, see what works for you. Um, and then you can make that decision. Yeah, I'll, I'll just reiterate there. Just as, as, as Caroline said, you know, other providers are available. But at the moment, this is uh, Rotary Great Britain and Ireland's a preferred crowdfunding partner. This is a strategic decision uh, as a member of the Rotary Great Britain and Ireland board that has been adopted uh, by Rotary Great Britain and Ireland as, a, um, as our preferred partner going forward. And as Steve has alluded to, and is at the end of the slide pack that Caroline is presenting tonight, our details on the fees, which are significantly um, lower than other providers. Uh, like I say, we're not dwelling on that tonight because of the sort of more complexity, but when we have our drop-ins and uh, keep your eye on the newsletters that go out from the service groups, uh, we will have some drop-in clinics specifically dedicated to Crowdfunder. Uh, which leads me into the next question. I, I might be able to answer actually on this one. It says from Catherine Jones, does Rotary as a whole qualify as a charity? And do indi or do individual clubs qualify as charities? So uh, Rotary Great Britain and Ireland is not a charity, uh, Catherine. Uh, we're an association. Uh, so with regard to charity and charitable fundraising, it is the individual clubs. I am aware, but not always, that certain districts have charitable status. But if you are doing a club project, this will be run through your club charity account, which you will have a charity number for. But Rotary Great Britain and Ireland as a whole, as you worded it, is not a charity. Uh, so I hope it answers that question. Moving on to Jimmy. Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's back with another question. As well as Nectar, are there any plans to seek points rewarders from um, others? And he's named three or four major high street names. Mm -hmm. Are we looking to do any further partnership with providers? Yes, um, I can't tell you who, but we have another very large service provider who has been offering a match fund with us. We'll say no more. <laughs> who have a very popular uh, membership point reward scheme that we are currently planning on launching next year. So if you do a bit of detective work, you might be able to work it out. But yes, the other points yeah. providers will be available. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Uh, we've got another question in uh, from Keith. Um, can we clarify the crowdfunder fees? Um, and that's from Keith. Um, I, I think we, we'll cover that in the um, there's a, a four or five slides at the back of Caroline's uh, presentation. And there's details of the fees in there. 
uh, Caroline's presentation will be available through Steve in a PDF format, but we will also put it in the description box on the Rotary Great Britain Ireland YouTube channel under crowdfunding. Uh, and there'll be a separate playlist that's created over the next couple of three days. We'll edit this uh, recording and we'll put a link in there for um, um, Caroline's slide pack in a PDF format. So hopefully that helps you there, Keith. Um, Phil, can what, I just can I just make yeah. a quick point on fees? Um, what the fees we have agreed uh, for this partnership are slightly different to the ones you will see on the crowdfunder website. So we are offering all Rotary groups, regardless of your charitable status, the charity fee structure, which is 0%. So regardless of whether you're actually a registered charity or not, you'll get the same fee structure. If you go on the crowdfunder fees page, you'll see that there is a slight difference between registered charity fees and not-for-profit organisations. And the not-for-profit organisation fees are higher normally. But because of this partnership and because you're very important to us, we're offering all Rotary groups the same fee structure that is the charity fee structure. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, we've got a question in from uh, Janine Bertwistle. And Janine, I believe, I think this is a good question. Uh, sorry, I've uh, missed a, a little bit of the meeting. Uh, we'll catch up on the recording. Does this only apply to the UK registered charities? And what parts of the UK, for instance, we're in Guernsey, but are, and there are several other jurisdictions in Rotary Great Britain and Ireland Obviously, we cover the whole of Ireland, we cover the Isle of Man, we cover Gibraltar, uh, and we cover all of the Channel Islands. Uh, is there any jurisdictional uh, thing changes that we need to know? You've stumped me with that question. <laughs> oh, no. Um, to take full advantage, so things like Net to Donate and the match funding, you have to be a UK-based charity i say uk based you have to have a uk bank account so actually it doesn't matter where you're based as long as you've got a uk bank account if you don't have a uk bank account um it, it's gonna we're gonna struggle to validate your uh you know validate you for aml legislation but let i let me find out about specifically about guernsey for you um and i know because i know for example you can pay in other currency so for example if you've got a euro you know if you're based in Ireland and you want to pay in euro that's not a problem um it's just whether the where the money's going um so I I believe yeah it's it, UK based bank accounts from what I understand but I will take that point away about Guernsey yeah I think it would would be good there we can confirm that we, we are Rotary Great Britain and Ireland so we cover the whole of Ireland uh we cover the Channel Islands Guernsey where Janine is right. Jersey yeah. and we also cover Gibraltar uh, and in my district, we cover the Isle of Man, which does have a slightly different yep. um, uh, sort of tax status and government status. So great That's question there, Janine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got actually I've got another one. It's 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 the Jimmy Janine Keith show tonight. Um, <laughs> so another one from Janine in here. How does Warm Wednesday link with Warm Welcome, which together the Together Coalition are promoting? and Rotary, are these one and the same organisation? That would be great to collaborate on this. Um, no, the Warm Wednesday was just an idea we had to give you, you know, if you were struggling to, you know, struggling for an idea, that was, a, that was an idea we came up with that we knew would enable you to get match funding through Aviva. So it was kind of like a, we wanted to find some an, a campaign idea for you to potentially take away, knowing that you would be able to get match funding on that specific project. It's nothing to do with anybody else. It was an idea we had. We haven't even launched it officially. It, it was a sort of an idea for Rotary if you wanted to do it. I don't know about the other organisations, so Steve may be able to shed some light on Steve, do you want to add no, it, it's, uh, it, it's There's no connection at all. It, so. Right, so it's just a play yeah. on words. Uh, yeah. Warm Wednesdays is a great marketing sort of catch line. It's nothing to do with warm welcome. Okay, no. thank you for that. Uh, Jimmy's back. Um, does this now mean that we can raise funds all year rather than the limited option previously? 
Steve, maybe want to just did we have a limited time frame previously, Steve? No, we didn't. You could always raise funds all year. The with crowdfunding and with global giving, there was always an accelerator period for a club that first came onto the platform. But once they graduated, they were free to just mount a campaign at any time of year. Um, and the same, I mean, with Crowdfunder, you can, again, do exactly the same all year round. But research shows that a short, sharp burst with crowdfunding can often reap the best rewards. But that's no reason not to carry on. Just keep it fresh and keep it under their noses. Excellent. Anything else to add there, Caroline? No. Nope. Um, Crowdfunder is open all year round. Uh, we do take advantage 24 7. Uh, we do like to take advantage of trending events and trending topics. So you've already mentioned Giving Tuesday, uh, things like um, Mental Health Awareness Week, it's National Stress Day today, you know, all of those things that you see trending on social, there will be projects attached to them. Uh, cost of living is obviously a big thing for us at the moment. So we're doing a lot around that. But yeah, you use us however, however you wish. Okay, so we're getting down to the, the, the last couple of questions now. Uh, John Daynell, uh, has asked the question, uh, what is the situation with regard to gift aid? Yep. Good question. <laughs> I'll leave that one to you, Caroline. <laughs> I thought you were going to jump in there. Um, so, uh, yes, um, if you're if you're registered for gift aid, uh, your supporters can will be given the option to gift aid their donation. Um, there are two ways you can manage gift aid through the crowdfunder platform. You can we will provide you with a report that's a gift aid, a dedicated gift aid report that collects all the information for a donor that you need to claim gift aid uh, from HMRC. So um, there is a specific gift aid report that you can download that has your donor's full name, address, postcode, information you need, um, and obviously how much their donation was so that you can claim that gift aid. We also have recently launched a new service with Swift Aid, who are a gift aid processing company that is a paid for service. Um, you pay a percentage of the overall amount raised. If you want somebody else to manage your gift aid claims, you can use the Swift Aid service. So two options for you, whether you want to do it yourself, it's free. If you don't, you can pay a small amount uh, to somebody else. Hopefully that answers the question. Excellent. Anything else there from you, Steve? All I, all I would add is I can confirm Swift Aid is cheaper than Global Giving handling it. Good. Uh, so last couple of questions. Uh, we've got Keith again, who's just asked another question, a little bit focused this one. Is there any tax benefit for UK and USA donors? So, I mean, obviously we're, we're an American organisation, uh, but we, we're wholly trained in the, in, the, in the UK or raise our funds in the UK. Uh, but there is uh, funding that goes through to uh, America. Are you aware of anything there? Or is that maybe something that you could take away and maybe come back um, to? I mean, not specifically linked to crowdfunder, but I obviously know that, that um, if you're dual registered, UK and in the US you have you can take advantage of both tax regimes and as a supporter you can obviously claim the tax back on your uh, tax return that you do in America um, remind me of what your the tax regime in the US is called I can't remember it's got a specific IRS. name IRS thank yeah. you Steve um, I know as a if you if you've got a, U, a US bank account you can claim your uh, tax against or offset uh, your donation against tax on, on your IRS statement. Uh, I don't know how it works for organisations, though. I probably have to find that out. But it was a good Maybe question. Something Steve. you could find out about. <laughs> it's a very good question. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, finally, one, uh, probably a lot we made, but we have covered this from Greg Roberts. He wants to know how a, um, how will we receive the recording so we can study the content and involve others within our respective clubs? Well, that's a great question, Greg, because we want you to spread the word about Crowdfunder and this platform. Um, it will be available on the Rotary Great Britain and Ireland YouTube channel. 
Uh, a link to it will be in the respective service newsletters that go out through uh, public image, uh, humanitarian service, um, probably probably foundation and um, membership. Uh, so you'll see it there. Uh, but if you keep an eye on the Rotary Great Britain on YouTube channel, it will be the latest video at the top. And in the description will be a link to the slides. Uh, remember to look at the very back end of the slide pack. Uh, Caroline's slides were about 25 slides, but the back sort of five slides, I've got some detailed information on fees and how to fill out certain forms, uh, which will be really useful. Um, so hopefully that helps you there, Greg. And um, John Daniel's just come back with a, a last minute question. He says, are there any additional arrangements with RF UK? Um, and I'll probably just try and answer this, John. Uh, on the hoof, it's a good question. And I will say, I don't know. So RF UK, Caroline, is uh, the Rotary Foundation in, in the UK, uh, an, an island, and it's how we collect money for our uh, charity. Uh, uh, the Rotary Foundation is our is our charity. Uh, also, we do a lot of work for other charities, but we have our own charity. Uh, and I think I will have to check that, John, uh, that I'm not fully aware of that. Uh, but I will come back uh, directly on that point. And I think that uh, answers uh, most of the questions tonight. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to just uh, close on, Steve? Well, um, yeah, I think you've covered virtually everything, but the the recording will be live within a few days. Um, to answer Greg, it will also be on District 1240 website as soon as it's available as well. Um, just thank you all for attending. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited about Crowdfunder because I believe clubs can look at what's on offer and can be inspired. So all I can say is thank you all again for attending. I'm here to help. So please reach out. Uh, my details will be in the packs that you receive. Reach out. We will do our utmost to help you realise your vision. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, great. Well, well, we'll call it a day there. I think tonight, uh, thank you very much uh, for attending. Keep an eye on the YouTube channel for a, uh, a recording. And uh, thanks, uh, Caroline, for uh, sharing your uh, knowledge of the, uh, the platform. Uh, we're delighted that we're working as a partner with you. So good, good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.